Well, I've got 10.30 by my watch, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We may still have a few folks um, joining us in the first couple minutes of the call. Um, welcome, everybody. This is Laura Sant. I'm with UNC's Highway Safety Research Center. And we provide the logistical support and the technical assistance um, for the North Carolina DOT on behalf of the Watch for Me program. Um, so we're going to have, this is our first chair meeting today. We have a few um, staffing updates that I'll let you know about. Um, as many of you know, James Gallagher, who's been doing a lot of the law enforcement trainings with you all, um, has left the communications position here. And today we have Dan Jolene helping fill in on the logistics. Um, so Dan is with us, and he'll also be part of the training that we have in Charlotte. And right now, everybody's um, lines are open. So just um, to let you know, you can be heard on the call today. And if you um, are entering your audio PIN number, then you can see there's a way to mute yourself if, if you need to. Um, and if Dan needs to, he can also help with um, with controlling the lines and making sure everybody can be heard or muted when they need to be. Um, Dan, did you want to make any other announcement about GoToMeeting, or we're pretty much set here? Yeah, I think we're good to go. Just to note that um, there is a chat area. Um, we'll be monitoring that throughout the call. If you have comments or questions, feel free to enter them there if you don't want to interrupt um, the presentation, and we can get to them during a break. Good point. Thanks, Dan. Um, we also have another change to announce. Um, Lauren Blackburn, who has led the Ped Bike Division for the past few years, um, left last month to return to the private sector. And in her place, Ed Johnson is going to be serving as the interim director um, at this point for NCDOT. I don't believe he's joined the call yet. Um, oh, yes, I see Ed. Ed, can you, um, are you on the line? Can you hear everything? Yes, I am. Hey, Laura. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, glad Ed. to be participating and um, look forward to helping out and, work, and working with y'all. Thanks. And so for those of you who haven't already worked with Ed, he's been part of the Watch For Me steering committee for the past um, couple years and has been part of some of our meetings and training. So he's certainly familiar with the work that's going on, but catching up to speed on some of the newer elements of the program. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and jump into the agenda. Um, as, as I mentioned in the email, this meeting we're really going to be talking about ways to enhance um, the effectiveness of partnerships. And some of this topic we covered around this time last year. So for the communities that have been part of the program for many years now, um, some of this may sound pretty familiar, may be consistent with what you're already doing. Um, but we do have a lot of um, folks that are new to the program. We have some that are rejoining after taking a break. And we, ha we always have a lot of new staff, even in communities that have participated in the past. Um, so we wanted to kind of go over some of the core um, concepts about partnerships and collaboration and, and communication. Um, and I've also tried to infuse this um, set of slides with all the new examples and lessons that I've been hearing um, and that you guys reported to us last year. Um, so hopefully there's some new new ideas that you can take away. Um, and there will be plenty of times um, throughout the presentation where I'll ask you to, to jump in and share your ideas and questions as well. And um, so you can feel free to, to jump in at any time. If, um, if you are muted, you may have to um, put your name in the chat pod and see if if Dan might have to unmute you, um, just be cognizant of that. Um, and so the first part of the meeting, I'll just give some quick updates. And then we'll talk a lot about um, kind of the core elements of partnership and communication. And then the last half, like we do with every SHARE meeting, um, we'll ask anybody who hasn't had a chance to speak to just let us know what they're planning. And we'll certainly have time for questions and discussion as well. So an update on the law enforcement training. We've now held um, eight of our courses. We have just two more to go in Charlotte. Um, we've gotten pretty positive feedback so far. Um, the the full day courses have been pretty well attended. Um, the new courses that we offered this year, the half day courses for um, kind of folks who are already advanced and, and looking for a, a deeper dive, had 
smaller attendance, but apparently a lot of really great participation and discussion. Um, we did have one um, community in Jacksonville that was canceled because we didn't have enough people to fill that um, those seats. So if you're from Jacksonville and you are still interested in training, um, please let me know. We have some space available in Charlotte where we can talk about setting up an additional course. Um, and I know I've heard some folks that were at the training in Apex this week and maybe wanted some additional training in Fuquay Varina and Nightdale and other places. Um, if you have training needs that were not met um, with the courses that we've offered, um, please let me know and we can, we can see about how we can accommodate you. Does anybody have um, feedback on the courses that have been offered so far? You can certainly send any feedback um, to me. I've put my email there on the screen. Um, and there's also the link if you need to register for the last two courses that are happening in Charlotte. And if you have any trouble registering, um, Dan's email is, is listed there as well. So in terms of the media and the materials that MCDOT purchased, um, I think there wasn't a lot of change since what we report to you at the kickoff meeting. Most of the media um, in the Outer Banks and coastal regions um, was expected to um, start showing up around Memorial Day. And then we're expecting for most of the other regions um, of the program to start seeing materials around the 4th of July. So you might even start seeing things this weekend. Has anybody seen? Um, clean graffiti or posters or banners um, or anything on the transit uh, stations yet? I'm not sure you may have to unmute yourself to speak. Or just a comment in the chat pod that Transylvania County has not seen those yet. Okay. Okay, those, um, I think the Transylvania media market should start seeing them after the 4th of July. And so um, I think Susan, those will sorry. run from, oh, go ahead. Uh, Susan uh, says that she's seen ads on the Go Raleigh buses. Um, okay. Nothing in June other than billboards. Morganton has not seen it. Either. Not yet. Okay. Marion does. Okay, yeah. and I know um, Ed, you were looking to um, track down a little bit more information about what's been done on the media side. Did, did you have anything else to share this morning? Uh, hey, Laura. Um, I wish I did. I have not received the um, report from the media folks yet as to what, um, what, and where. I know that. Um, for our materials um, that we've we've sent out everything except for the, the Charlotte Davidson and Kannapolis folks, uh, and that will be the mid-July um, training. But I wish I had uh, I, I haven't received anything from the media folks uh, as to a, a kind of a report or an update. Okay. So sorry about that. That's all right. I think a lot of it will be kicking off this weekend. So as we get updates from them, we will certainly use the, um, the Google Groups list to, to forward out new information. Um, and if you start seeing ads and billboards and, and materials, um, we really love it when, when we're able to get pictures of those things out in, out in the real world. So if, if you are able to catch a, catch a photo of something and want to share it with us or put it on the listserv, that would be wonderful as well. And so, yes, most of most communities who have participated in the training should have already received all the print materials with the lights and the banners and the posters and rat cards and all that. Um, so, if you haven't received those or you have any um, questions or, or trouble with what with what amounts you're getting, um, please follow up. You can email me directly, um, or if you want to put any messages in the chat pod, we can follow up. Any questions right now to, to share with the group? Okay. 
Okay, well, we'll keep moving. Um, so another update I wanted to share is just that we have now completed the evaluation of last year's program. And last year was unique in that we were able to do a statewide survey and continue our collection of behavioral observations at sites across um, several of the cities. Um, so you may remember if, if you were from the Asheville or the Greenville communities or several of the communities in the Triangle, we were working with you to, to um, figure out the sites where we could observe drivers and whether or not they were yielding to pedestrians. Um, so I can share just a tidbit of, the, of what we're finding on that. Um, we are seeing a, a short-term improvement in the driver yielding rates at the places we've been monitoring them. You can see there's kind of some fluctuation over time. And interestingly, it, it did follow very closely the patterns of the enforcement that was taking place. Um, so when more operations were done, then we saw a little jump in yielding. Um, and certainly there might be other factors, seasonal um, things that might be influencing these trends, but I think our takeaway is that you know, the more enforcement we can do, the more engagement and communication and outreach we're doing, we actually are making a, a difference with behaviors. Um, and the other really interesting thing we were able to do this last year is to revisit sites that we went to back in 2012 and 2013 when the program was still in its infancy and, and monitor driver yielding at those same places. And so over the longer term, we're seeing even better improvement. Um, we're seeing about a 15% increase from 2012 to 2013 and another 15% um, between 2013 and 2015 um, at those sites. Um, so I think this is, is certainly giving us more evidence um, that you know things are, are improving in terms of behaviors, and we want to keep um, seeing those increases and, and seeing ultimately crashes go down. So we do hope once this um, this final report has been finalized and approved by DOT, we we will put it up on the website and, and let you um, take a look. And it's it's really um, chock full of good information on what happened last year, and a lot of that is thanks to you guys for sharing with us all the work that you've done. Um, so I really hope that report reflects um, all that you've put into the, the program in 2015 and that we can continue and build upon that success this year. So now um, we'll move into the, the role of partnerships and, and communication in, in campaign activities. And one of the things that we stressed during the application process was that each community had their own set of local partners. I know many of you um, have those and are, are continuing to build those partnerships. We heard from you that um, this is not a program that, that one person can lead. It, it's got to be a group effort. Um, and so we really want to you know, keep strengthening that foundation. Um, and so this this presentation is really about sharing some of the best ideas that you guys have given us from past experiences and trying to be able to learn from others and, um, and keep having a very strategic, um, thorough, and, and comprehensive approach moving forward. Um, so I do want to preface also that there's a lot of ideas on the following slides. We're not expecting every community to do every one of these ideas, um, but we really just want to give you a sense of the range of things that, that you can be trying out and, and doing in your community. And every community is going to have different resources to draw from and, and will take a different approach. So just a quick check-in, and you can use the chat pod or you can talk, um, but we'd like to get a sense of how many of you have truly established multi-agencies, um, agency coalitions at this point? Do you have partners beyond your own um, department? Mark Burroughs says yes in the chat pod. Good, Brevard, Transylvania County is one of our, our newer communities this year. I'm glad you guys have gotten um, a head start on that. How many folks have used the communication resources that are provided on the um, partner resources page? And have you started using those and formulating a, a communications plan? In the chat pod, just going back to your first question, Laura, um, Joe in Charlotte, I think, says that um, they've got all of the above, all the things you mentioned, multi-agency uh, 
coalitions. Boone has a multi-agency coalition. New, New Hanover County has 10 partners. Um, Greensboro is working on it uh, using the communications plan for brainstorming and will incorporate with BPAC meeting plan for July. Great, great. Um, so a lot of you are probably very well on your way, and I hope that this information is still timely. I know a lot of the coastal communities have already, you know, kicked off their campaigns in May and are really trying to be ready for the, the summer tourism season. Um, but for those of you who are still kind of solidifying your plans and your coalitions, um, hopefully you can, you can get some new ideas today. So the, the communications template, um, which you may be familiar with now, covers four main areas. Um, developing partnerships, um, planning kickoff events or other types of events, um, engaging the public, and then distributing all those materials. Since you received a lot of boxes of things um, at all those trainings, we want to make sure those um, get off the shelf and into the, the right hands of the people who can use them. Um, and for each of those sections, the communication plan has some listing of resources um, and key questions that you might be asking yourselves and, and your group members. Um, so if you have feedback on this, we are always looking to update those resources and, and share things that are helpful with others. Um, so certainly feel free to, to let me know um, your thoughts on that. So in terms of partnerships, um, you all are already really were, were aware, I'm sure, of the, the benefits of this. But um, having the right partner group can help um, get buy-in and approval for things that might be needed to be done. Um, it can help you have the support people that you need to distribute all those materials and attend all those events that you're thinking of, of leading. Um, and it can really, you know, partners can help alert you to new opportunities um, to give you new ideas and expertise and, and extend the reach of the program. And from what we've heard from you, there are some really key partner groups that if you don't already have them part of your coalition, you might think about ways to bring them in. Um, having a communications officer or a public information officer from a law enforcement agency um, can be really useful. They already have great ties to um, the community out there and, and knowledge of media relations and reporters that might be important. Um, this year was new in the application program. You may have noticed we actually required you to list a, a communications officer in addition to an enforcement officer. Um, so we're trying to really get a sense of who within your group is going to be leading those efforts. And, and hopefully they're, um, if they're not here in today's meeting, you can share with them um, what you might have picked up and taken away from, from the share meeting. Uh, parks and Rec departments and planning departments, those folks do so many local events and outreach events. Um, it's a really good way to tie into kind of the broader community calendar. The schools we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, they're kind of a special group. Um, and advocacy community, I, I can't stress enough the importance of connecting with um, you know, some of those bike groups and walking groups and, and folks that really care about these issues. Um, and they can, really, they can really help the program. And um, as we've learned in the past, you know, sometimes they can be problematic if, if they haven't been brought in early. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more as well. Um, what we heard last year is that there are a lot of other folks out there too, um, hospitals, health departments. Um, I know many of you are, are working very closely with Safe Kids, um, so there's there's no shortage of, of people that you may reach out to it and have join your program. Um, and large employers we've seen um, have been really useful in the past. Um, folks like hospitals and schools um, that have staff newsletters, they can get a lot of information out to to a big number of people very quickly. Um, so so think about the unique. Um, employers and, and businesses within your community as well. Um, Charlotte and Asheville and, and many of the groups that we worked with last year um, gave us some really great insights on the partners they were working with. Um, hospital groups, um, Charlotte I think was one of the few that was working with AARP to do some walking audits and assessments and, and um, think about pedestrian and bicycle safety from the older pedestrian perspective and other things. Uh, 
um, Asheville was working very closely with their um, bicycle dealer associations and bike clubs. And um, Chapel Hill, who's been one of our partners from the beginning, um, has been able to have kind of very regular, I think it was almost weekly at one point, um, meetings with, with multiple um, leaders from different departments across their city. Um, so if anybody um, from years past or even the new folks want to talk about um, who their partners are, if they have a new partner this year that they, they're really excited to work with, um, let us know. You can open up your phone line or, or type into the chat box. Laura, this is Ed. Hey, Ed. Hey, I had a question for the group. Um, is anybody working, any of the communities out there working with any faith-based organizations, um, churches or before, before or after school um, organizations that are associated with churches? I know in the past Durham worked with their interfaith council. Um, Dale, I'm not sure if you guys are still um, closely related to them or if, if you have knowledge of that. Dale's phone is muted. I was just curious with that because sometimes that's a good catalyst for uh, get a non-traditional partner to get the message out to um, uh, a different um, social strata uh, that needs to receive that message. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, Laura, Mark Burroughs sent a laundry list of the partners there, planning, sheriff's department, hospital, Blue Ridge Bike Club, volunteer fire department, bike dealers, and Brevard College. That's great. Yeah, that's a really good um, group of folks as well. Dan, are you able to unmute Dale in case he is able to speak? It looks like it's muted by the organizer. Oh, let me toggle it back and forth, um, Dale. Dale, you've got to enter, um, if you enter your PIN number uh, at the top under where it says phone call, under the access code and the all that, if you press pound, type in the PIN and then press pound again, you should have audio ability. Uh, looks like that's required in order to unmute you. Oh, and it looks like Charlotte's staff says that they presented to a Latino faith group um, through the connection that they had. So. Um, so yeah, that's a good example there. Yeah, yeah. Ed, I think you, you raise a good question there. Um, yeah, I guess for me, I've seen a lot of uh, energy, a lot of movement that certainly um, looks like folks through the chat box are, are plugging into with planning departments, recreation departments, and, and uh, Safe Routes of School um, uh, things that are, that are already connected, uh, Safe Kids and things like that. Um, and, uh, and those are fantastic. Those are, those are working obviously very well. Um, but we've also seen with the active routes to school coordinators uh, in a non-traditional setting, non-traditional partners, there's a lot of energy to be gained in non-traditional partners and just trying to think outside the box of, of the normal health department, parks and recreation department, schools, uh, those kind of things that if there's uh, um, a way to connect um, and that faith-based community sometimes is, is just that. Absolutely. And I can tell you, um, when we started the Watch For Me program a few years ago, we were doing um, analyses of where the pedestrian and bicycle crashes were occurring in Durham and a, a few other communities. And one of the patterns we saw was that some of the crashes were really clustering in more vulnerable parts of the, of the city, some of the lower income neighborhoods. And almost every neighborhood where we started visiting to look where the crashes were happening, 
there was a church on the corner, and we started thinking about, you know, what if we put safety messages on the church bulletins that, that some of those churches could hand out, since they were really um, kind of the pillar of, of these communities that, you know, that need, need a support group like that. And so um, we're certainly really open to thinking about, you know, how do we reach out with um, churches and other, like you said, non-traditional groups to get the word out. That's certainly folks that are heavily burdened by the crashes, for sure. Well, I'll keep moving along, and, and feel free, folks, to, to jump in at any time or, or send us a message offline as well. Um, in terms of distributing materials, now that you've gotten a lot of materials, I'm sure many of you have pretty good experience with knowing where these um, should live and how they can you know, get off the shelf pretty quickly. Um, but here's a here's a list of ideas: uh, libraries, community centers. Um, there's the the churches we've started talking about. Um, other civic organizations and and clubs may be really receptive to receiving um, these materials. And again, those of you who are working with your planning departments and public um, you know health departments and parks and rec folks, they'll probably have really good insights on on where these things um, can go. And um, just one other new idea, we, um, Greenville, Mike Montaigne emailed me. He's not able to join us on the call today, but he did send me some customized materials that they've um, put together. And I know a lot of you in the past have developed um, bags and mouth pads and other things with the Watch For Me logo on it. Um, so we certainly encourage you to keep um, developing your own materials that you might want to distribute if it, if it makes for a more targeted um, message for an audience that you're reaching out to in particular. Um, Mike gave me some details on these posters. They're going to be handed out during the National Night Out in Greenville. And this year, they've selected pedestrian safety to be their big theme um, for the National Night Out event. Um, and they're also planning um, a 5K sometime in November. Um, and they're going to have the 5K be free as long as participants wear high visibility clothing while they're running. So I think that's another great way to um, get these safety messages out and, and engage the community along the way with wearing those um, high vis clothes. Um, we do have on our partner resources page, we have links to other materials some of you developed last year. I know New Hanover County and Asheville and others have um, developed their own public safety messages. If you want to share anything you've been developing with us, we can certainly um, post it to the site as well. So local businesses, I mentioned, can be a really important partner. Um, we've seen in the past um, bike shops willing to take a lot of the posters and signage, and that's a good way to get those safety messages right into the hands of people who may be biking. Um, we've also seen gas stations as a good place for putting up posters when drivers are standing there pumping gas, you know, they're looking for something to read, and it's, it's a really good, um, you know, opportunity to, uh, good opportunity to get some of the safety messages out to drivers. Um, also, working with local businesses before you do enforcement or collaborating on those good ticket programs um, is another way to engage the community. And Durham has always been fantastic about this. Um, in some of their kind of entertainment districts or pedestrian districts, they really canvass the community, um, get some of the rat cards and materials out to um, the local businesses and give them a heads up about the enforcement that they're doing. And they always get a, a lot of really positive feedback. And sometimes even businesses are willing to you know, help provide coupons or um, other giveaways for some of, the, some of the outreach programs that they're doing. And um, so banners, I think. We're not giving out as many banners this year. Um, it's mostly for the newer communities that haven't received materials in the past. Um, but we certainly see that a lot of those banner banners end up staying up year round. Um, and they're really um, good to have up at some of those high crash areas or some of those places where they can be seen by a lot of pedestrians or drivers. Um, and we've also seen them put up temporarily for festivals and events and safe routes to school days and things like that. So there's a lot of good ideas for, for ways to place those items. Laura, a question in the chat area um, about uh, 
whether or not uh, Mark is asking if the templates for the Greenville posters uh, could be made available. Uh, I'm not sure the answer to that, um, or if there's any assistance with developing uh, uh, sort of uh, modified tailored posters. Absolutely. So I can um, I can talk with Mike Montaigne to see if he can share what they've developed in Greenville. But all of the Watch For Me NC files, we are able to give you the raw files. Um, I'll have to work with Ed and the folks at DOT to, to find out where those live. Um, but we can certainly provide you with the logo and all the other um, design files in, in case you want to develop or adapt new materials. So another way you might want to use those files, too, is um, to put them on digital digital sites. Um, if you have online utility bill statements, I know many communities have used those in the past um, to get safety messages out throughout the year to, to those um, municipal um, utility clients. And I know a lot of the universities also pretty routinely use their um, campus websites. And, and the um, municipals as well have, have sites and places where the Watch For Me materials are housed. So that's an option. And social media is, is I think, a, a growing um, place where we're trying to, um, to do a lot more outreach and, and generate conversation um, in more of a grassroots fashion. And this is one that um, you know, we've, we've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work. Um, one of the things we've been told is you know, if you already have a social media presence and a Facebook page and a Twitter account, use it, but if it's something that's very new for you, um, then it may not be the best time investment. And um, it can end up taking a lot of time, so you, you do want to be very strategic about it. Um, but things like Facebook and Nextdoor are really good for reaching out to parents and established neighborhood groups. Um, you know, just a regular posting at, at a key time um, about what's going on can, can be re really useful. Um, Twitter is also really good and, and also reaches a lot of students. Um, we know from working with the Wake County Public Schools, they have 130,000 um, followers on Twitter and another 30,000 Facebook friends. Um, so that's just a huge reach. And, and what they're telling us is that all the students tend to follow Twitter and learn what's happening at the schools and around them. Um, and then their parents are following on Facebook and learning about things through that. So there may be, you know, if your group, if, if your lead agency doesn't have the biggest following, um, maybe look to other groups within your neighborhood and community that do have a, a really large following and, and try to tap into that. Um, and um, to see, you know, what the most time, timely issues are in the community, what are people talking about, and try to connect it to what's happening in the campaign. Uh, so you might create Sorry, a I just, Oh, go ahead. Oops. Sorry, I just um, put a link in the chat area from uh, Carborough Police Department uh, had an Instagram post of um, from this morning of an enforcement operation that they're doing. So it looks like they're using the Watch For Me NC hashtag, so that might be an idea for anybody out there who wants to do something similar. That's fantastic. Yeah, I was going to say also Instagram is great and we've seen folks sharing um, pictures from their campaign and, and pictures from the posters and materials that they made as well. Um, so that's really great for, for those visual items. Um, I think the, the UNC campus a while back did what they called Christmas in July and that's when they handed out a lot of bike lights and materials to um, students who were caught being good on campus, who were wearing their helmets and, and using the crosswalks and such. So um, yeah, I, I would love to see more use of, of the Watch For Me hashtag. Um, we can hopefully follow more of what's happening on social media that way. So um, events is another pretty popular activity that a lot of you guys are engaged in. Um, last year, you all reported more than 120 local events. Um, across the community, so it was about six or seven per per neighborhood or per community that was um, that were hosting these kinds of things. National Night Out was far and away the most popular thing we heard about, um, but I know a lot of folks really leveraged the um, back to school nights and stuff to um, to get in with their schools and parent communities. Um, 
and many of you, I know Granville County did um, a lot of great events tied to their festivals, music and arts festivals and concert series. Um, so those are all really great options. Um, fun runs are another way where um, you're bringing together a lot of bicyclists and pedestrians um, can can really get creative with how you share the messages about safety to those big groups. Um, and ideally, you'll have, you know, if you're putting together a communications plan, you'll have in front of you a calendar of these events that are coming up so they don't take you by surprise and, and you can be ready um, to, to, to be part of those events. Um, but also one other reminder is that the bike lights that we're providing this year, um, we, we have fewer and fewer available because this year we are using more expensive bike lights that actually have um, a better longer, um, I guess, longer distance light that, that they offer. Um, so those are really not for these kinds of public events. They're really intended um, very specifically for the law enforcement when they're, when they're coming up on bicyclists riding at night that don't have a, a light. We want to be very judicious in, in how we're handling those out. Um, another thing that's, that's, I think, a really important concept is um, not just tapping into the, the public in general, but really targeting um, your communications and outreach to some key groups within the community. Um, you want your bicycle and pedestrian advisory council, if you have one, to know what's happening. You want your town council and other elected officials um, to really be in the know and to be part of the events and, and things that you're planning. Um, and there may be certain neighborhood groups that you really want to reach out to in a targeted way. Um, I think, in particular, reaching out to the elected officials to make sure that they're aware of and supporting the Watch For Me program is really important. And I tell a story um, often that, that happened in the first year of the campaign. Um, the city of Raleigh was starting some of their first enforcement operations near the Capitol building. And they actually pulled over a driver who had not yielded to a pedestrian. And it turned out to be a state representative. Um, and he was extremely angry, and he sent some very angry emails to DOT. But because Raleigh had done such a good job of canvassing the community, they, they had told other people within the town and within um, the communities that they were going to be doing this enforcement. They had alerted the media. Um, you know, this one person really did not have a leg to stand on. Um, and I think it, it could have gone really poorly if they hadn't been you know, reaching out to so many others. So I think um, this is just something to, to be aware of moving forward. So I've listed a lot of um, the you know great innovative things that are happening. And I certainly welcome you to share your, your newest and greatest ideas or, or ask questions right now of the others. Um, you know, I think one thing that's really great is that every community is thinking about this in terms of what is their biggest need? Um, in Kerala last year, you know, they they actually analyzed some of their crashes and saw that it was um, international students who were coming for um, you know summer work programs that were involved in some of the crashes, and um, were you know, these are students who were coming to the U.S. and um, didn't have their own vehicle, so they were walking and biking a lot more than the average tourist. Um, and so they actually, you know, developed specific packets for those groups. They engaged them in the in the program, and I think that's a really nice example of a way to target the people who are most likely to be impacted by the crashes. Um, so Durham, as well, has always, um, you know, done a lot um, to leverage. You know, the, you can do a lot to take advantage of a small amount of time that you have if. Um, if you have time for one presentation, you can reach you know, a group of 20 people, or you can reach out to you know, give a presentation to taxi drivers and a fleet of bus drivers, and you can reach hundreds that way. Um, so think also about how to be really strategic with your time, not just with the audience that you're reaching out to. Um, anybody else want to share at this time um, what you found to be a really good way to distribute those um, important safety messages.
can't tell if people are typing into the chat poll or not, but I'll go ahead and keep going and, and we can. Um, Laura, there is, a, there is a comment that just came in, or a question, I guess. Uh, Joseph, is Joseph uh, Seymour. Um, it says, given proposed state bicycle regulations for rear bike lights or reflective clothing at night and potential lane positioning, what are your discussions about modifying the messaging later in the fall, or is that a matter for next year's campaign? The, the light See, message, what? we don't really get into the specifics of the law with the campaign materials. I think we do um, just recommend that bicyclists and pedestrians be as, you know, um, visible as possible if they're if they're walking and biking at night. Um, I certainly think in the future we need to keep keep the changes in the law um, in mind, and that may affect what information we share with the officers at the trainings. Um, but I think our message is pretty consistent to the public about the importance of being well lit, regardless of what the you know what the requirements of the law are. I'll keep keep moving along here. Um, the media is a, is another big um, area that, that a lot of the program participants in Watch for Me are, are going to be involved in, um, and the media can really help shape some of those broader perspectives within the community and help get the word out about not just what's happening, um, but why it's important, what the public can do to improve safety for themselves and others. Um, and so every time we talk with the media, it's an opportunity to, to reiterate those points. Um, not just we're going to be having an operation here, but you know, what, what's the problem? What's the nature of the issues that we're seeing? Maybe not even just the problem, but what are the good things that we're seeing? Um, maybe we're seeing a lot more people using those lights and using helmets, and, and we want to show that this is becoming the norm in our communities. Um, that's an important message as well. And there's a lot of different ways to get those messages out by working with the media. Um, press events, um, certainly you all are pretty familiar with, media alerts and news releases. Um, I haven't heard of too many communities actually writing letters to the editor or engaging the blog community. Um, but I'm certainly interested if, if any of you are doing this to see if that's something you found to be effective or not. Um, but another thing in, in terms of working with the media is not just the messages that you're giving and how you're giving it, but thinking about who your messenger is. The messenger really matters. Um, if it's, again, if you're working with those elected officials, if you have somebody higher profile who's in your coalition um, who can help with those press events or, or messaging or write that letter to the editor, I think that can carry a lot more weight than, than the average um, staff person. So um, another reason to be thinking about having those folks involved in your partnership from the very beginning. And that picture is just an example. We had um, a press event last um, November in Durham where NCDOT Secretary Tennyson spoke along with um, one of the police chiefs, uh, the assistant chief for the city of um, Durham's police department. And that, that was just a really well attended um, event. So um, those press events can be really useful in announcing the programs. Um, we've seen that the media really like to come out if they've heard that there's going to be some kind of special enforcement operation. Um, last year it was timed so well um, with the press event. They, they did a law enforcement action right across the street from where the press event was being held. And right when they were doing some law enforcement there was a group of school children um, down the street who, totally unplanned, came up and tried to use the crosswalk. And um, it was just a really great opportunity to see, like, not just what the enforcement operations were looking like, um, and that was probably the most well-protected crossing those kids had ever had. Um, but it was also a way for people to remind themselves of why it's so important. We are trying to protect children and families and people of all ages um, who are just trying to cross the street to get, to get where they need to go. Um, so those are, those are really great opportunities. Um, and I think we've learned some, some really important things for how to get 
the media to come out. Um, it is harder every year, as you as you probably understand, to make the program feel new um, enough and timely enough to where people come out and it's not the same old, same old. Um, so I think having the right people in your network is really important. Um, connecting that to something bigger that's happening in the community is always useful. You know, if it's back to school day or if it's Halloween or if it's um, walk to school, bike to school month, um, or if it's something else that the community cares about, just make sure that the, the Watch For Me program is relevant. Um, and give people a heads up, not just the media, but your partners as well. Um, the last thing you want is for your elected official to read about something first in the paper. You know, you want them to know what's happening before they see it in the press. And this is also where the advocacy community is important to engage. Um, we've had a couple instances in the past where um, the police started doing a, an operation that you know, was very well intended um, to improve safety for pedestrians and bicyclists, but the advocates weren't fully aware of what was going on or what the, what the focus of the program was, and, and they got very defensive very quickly. Um, so you want them on your side, and you want them to be helping amplify your message and not, um, you know, not end up um, having to deal with, with, with any kind of um, media fallout. Um, and I think one of the other things is just to be ready for an interview and have your talking points in place. Um, and that's where we can help out a lot. We do have a lot of talking points already put together in that communications toolkit on the website. Um, but you want to communicate that this is a balanced program. It's not a jaywalking campaign. We're looking at safety for pedestrians and drivers and bicyclists. Um, we're not targeting any one group. And we're not necessarily targeting any one neighborhood. Um, I think that's, that's important as well. And I think we need to be um, very clear and transparent um, with what the Watch For Me program is aiming to do. Um, and so a couple other things that, that we've heard, too, um, and that we know to be true from, from the research side of things, um, if we want to be effective in changing behavior, we, people need to perceive that there's a risk of being caught and a consequence. And so that's why when, when we're doing these operations, if we can work with the media and, let, and help increase that perception that there's a risk of being caught if you're not following the law, that's one thing that's going to help us increase those yielding rates. Another thing we've learned from the research is that um, people behave in the ways that they perceive to be the norm in their community. Um, so if, if driver yielding and if pedestrians using crosswalk, if, if that is the norm and that's perceived to be the norm, you're going to keep encouraging and improving those behaviors. So it's not just about the stick approach, it's about the carrot and helping people know that this is, you know, when you come into our community, we expect you to be yielding to pedestrians, we expect you to be abiding by the laws and, and being the safest road user. So I know last year um, we had a lot of communities, we had more than 34, I think, um, stories that covered the program. We archived everything that we w learned about on the Watch For Me site there. So you can see what kind of coverage we had last year. A lot of it was very positive. Um, but some, you know, some negative things came out as well that had to be dealt with. Um, one of the things that we learned um, about the, the Good Ticket program, when folks give out those kind of coupons and positive reinforcement for the good behaviors they're seeing, um, that can be a really good way to get media attention. Um, we saw in, in Greenville they probably had three or four articles just on that one good ticket campaign alone. Um, but I think, again, it's one of those things you have to be strategic and get into the media before it happens so that people know what it is. Because um, we saw in other places where people didn't know what it was about. They thought that they were um, maybe pulling over drivers without cause. And we had to be you know, really clear about what the Good Ticket campaign was doing and who it was reaching. Um, and um, so I think just being very strategic in the communications will be helpful. Um, did anybody from the communities last year want to um, share any other lessons learned or things that you're thinking about doing differently this year to engage the media?
Uh, Laura, nothing in the chat pod, but I just wanted to make the comment that I think the being, I think your comment about being proactive when it comes to working with the media, like getting that first message out there and not being in a position to have to respond is a really key, a key message. Um, and I think that a lot of times it might, it might be a difficult relationship to make because I think a lot of agencies might be in the position that a lot of the media coverage that they get might be negative. And so in, instead of like coming at it from a, a defensive point of view, it's building that relationship so you can kind of plant those positive stories. One thing we found in other projects is that typically, um, you know, journalists are, are stretched fairly thin, um, especially these days. And so a lot of times if you approach them with ideas for articles and things that you they could write about, I think they're they're more than willing to at least hear you out and and put the, place those stories um, just to get more content. So um, it's definitely an opportunity to to be proactive and kind of get those messages out there before something happens. Great, that's a really good point, Dan. Thanks. Also, this is Ed. Um, each one of the divisions. Uh, throughout the state, the 14 different divisions has a communications person or a public information officer with NCDOT, and um, they're connected to the Raleigh office and the communications office here, and they're more than willing to help out uh, with messaging, uh, getting um, press releases together, uh, and and working in that way. So if there are communities out there that uh, would like to be in touch with those, please let us know so we can um, put you in contact with those division staff members. Uh, that Sometimes that can help with the smaller municipalities that are stretched for staff uh, and, and uh, the abilities to do that. Yeah, that's a great point. Is there um, a way maybe we can put together a listing of those 14 division contacts and put that up on the website so they can look up the, the person in their community in the region? Certainly. Certainly. I can get that together and, and put that out there. Um, and uh, not, not a problem. Great. Yeah. And that, that's actually a perfect transition um, to some of the discussion we were going to have with the, about the schools. Um, we do already on the website have a listing under contact lists on the partner resources page where you can find your active routes to school coordinator. Those folks are also amazing and really know what's happening in the region and can help um, make connections and support the program. So if you haven't already identified who your active routes to school coordinator is, um, you can go to the website and do that. And um, and working with schools is, as I mentioned, another really useful way to just really tap into a big community of um, parents and children and people who may be in need of, of information about pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, and we found that you know, every school system is different. And within that, every school is different. And um, you know, some communities may have a hard time getting into their schools. Schools are very busy. They have a lot of testing and other requirements. Um, so they may not think it's a priority um, to really get going. But other schools are, are really bought in. Um, and some of them are already teaching pedestrian and bicycle safety through their classes or their PE. Um, so you really just need to look and, and see what the context is that you're in your area. We'll try to find the gatekeeper. Um, maybe it's a really active school board member or a principal or someone with the PTA who has a lot of influence and cares about the issues that can become an internal champion for your program. Um, and then certainly there's also opportunities to connect with after school programs. Um, one thing we've heard from you guys in the past is that schools may not be willing to take on you know, a lot of work in terms of putting out messages to to parents and students and, and incorporating safety materials into their classrooms, but they're very excited if you want to come and do an assembly or, or come to the school and give a presentation, they're very open to that. And, and a lot of you have, I know from the enforcement side, have, have played that role with the schools for a long time um, and have school resource officers kind of already in, in the district and know what's happening. Think, think about um, those, and um, we know that every partner, because the Watch For Me program receives funding from 
um, you know, safe route to school programs. We know that every one of you is is already expected and is working within the school. Um, not necessarily all of them, but but some of them. Um, so we want to keep seeing how these um, these relationships are building and, and and what's happening from the school side. And I think I've actually covered most of this slide. The, the one-time events and giving materials at open houses is something that we've heard from you a lot that happens. Um, one thing we are still stressing is thinking about longer-term um, ways that the school can, can strategically support pedestrian and bicycle safety, whether it's through the Watch For Me program or otherwise. Um, a lot of schools are now um, starting to learn more about the Let's Go NC materials. There's an entire website um, with videos that demonstrates what it is. Um, we're starting to hear about um, more schools teaching those courses. Um, and sometimes it's even officers going to the schools teaching the Let's Go materials for a couple of days. Um, so I think getting those in and then getting policies in place that support the long-term use of the, those materials that's really um, when we're going to start to see um, child pedestrian crashes decrease. It's, it's when we have those kind of systematic and, and policy, um, policy solutions in place. I think this is one of our um, older classic pictures of a um, of walk to school event that took place in Raleigh. Um, where they had the banner, this was just a really good visual that they shared with us. Um, but Chapel Hill has done some really interesting things as well, promoting a, a video contest where the kids um, develop the safety messages. Um, <clears throat> Durham, for several years, had been um, doing regular outreach to the school crossing guards. Um, so they're trained on, on how to improve safety um, from their perspective. And I know lots of other communities are working in the schools as well. Anybody tell us what plans they have for working with the schools this year? While everybody's uh, thinking about that or, or responding perhaps in the chat box, um, one of the things that uh, I think is, is key about especially with the Watch For Me program in schools, uh, elementary and middle schools, or even if you uh, branch out to the high school or K through 12, is um, that this is a great way for a police officer, a sworn officer, to be seen in a positive light. In, in the instance where um, a lot of officers are traditionally not seen uh, in that way, and uh, using the Let's Go NC curriculum or the Watch For Me materials, uh, working with your active routes to school coordinator or even um, the health department coordinator and a wellness coordinator in a way, but it's a way for a police officer to be um, seen uh, in a positive role uh, in a, a, a non-emergent uh, position. And um, this is a great way for that to happen. Yeah, we hear a lot from the from the officers um, about just how how nice it is when they're part of these kinds of school events or the good ticket campaigns, just to be um, you know thanked by their community members and to be seen positively because you know so much of their job is is under really difficult, um, not always the most pleasant circumstances. Sounds like folks in Wilmington are, are um, doing some more school events this year. I need the chat pod here. Yeah, it looks like uh, Laura Boone is says they've got information at kindergarten orientation, bike rodeo, uh, kickoff in elementary school, and walk back to school days. Uh, Greensboro typically does at least two schools with Walk to School Day. The arts coordinator has been working with the county school administration on some of the training in the fall uh, with PE teachers. And it looks like in Charlotte, Safe Kids and the county health department um, are reach, reaching the schools on behalf of the campaign. Excellent. Excellent. 
Scarlett, I know you guys have your work cut out for you because you have one of the largest school districts in the country. Um, so, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of potential there for sure with working with the schools. And at the university level as well, um, we don't this year we don't have as many. Um, universities leading programs. I think they're starting to be more integrated into the municipal programs. Um, but I know UNC um, Chapel Hill, UNC Wilmington, um, a lot of the universities were really active um, in years past. And there's just a lot of very unique opportunities for reaching the student and the, the campus community. Um, tabletop ads and, and things through campus dining, going through campus housing, putting messages in dorms, um, leveraging all the energy and excitement of the students and the, the groups that they have, um, and taking advantage of the, the campus media resources that are available are, are all um, really good options. So I'm excited to hear what the, what the universities do this year as well. Um, so I think just the, the overall takeaway Whenever you're reaching out or you're working with a partner or you're thinking about your communications, um, it's important to you know, be ready to make the case, to have the data in front of you to say why this is important, um, and to tell the story of pedestrian and bicycle safety and what the Watch For Me program means for the community. Um, it's important to work, work the system and work within the system to um, you know, figure out what that low-hanging fruit is, what those easy communication opportunities are, and then to think about what the longer-term reach is and, and where you want to go and how you want to be strategic um, from year to year. And to really um, continue to build that steering group um, or that core group of leaders. And I think having in-person meetings is, is really important. Um, I wish we were able to have more in-person meetings with you all rather than virtual. But that's, I think, given the nature of a statewide program, this is the best we can do. But um, there is just such a huge value to being able to meet and talk with people face to face um, and have kind of regular correspondence with, with a diverse group of people. Um, so just some resources for you um, that I'm sure you've already been tapping into. The, the partner website has uh, an entire section of communications tools, as well as materials in Spanish languages. Um, and we have the community profiles we've updated from last year. Um, we now have so many communities participating that we've divided them up so you can see communities that might have um, a similar population to you. Because I think that's another issue. When you're reaching out to a community of 5,000 or 10,000, your, your strategies are very different than when you have 100,000 plus or 600,000 people that you're trying to um, somehow reach. And, and we know that resources are very limited. So these um, profiles, I think, give a really good flavor for what's possible in terms of partnerships and what kind of um, outreach and, and other communication strategies um, may work. So, so please do look at those and um, be thinking about sharing what you're learning because when you send us pictures and, and stories of what you're doing, that's what we use to put into those profiles and share with others. So I think that's the heart of, of what we're trying to do as well is just really um, help diffuse um, the best practices amongst all the different partners that we've got this year. So with that, I think we can turn it to the second part of the meeting. We can spend this last hour. We probably won't need the full hour. Um, but I just wanted to give everybody on the call an opportunity to share with us um, what you're doing in terms of communications or what you're planning um, for the future. For the folks in the coastal areas that may have already been doing something, we'd love to hear um, how things have been going in the past couple of of months, um, and if anybody has any questions or concerns. So I may, um, maybe Dan, do you think you can go down the attendee list and, and just open up the lines um, one by one, and, and we'll see if we can ask those folks to share what's happening? Yeah, um, so everyone should be off mute, except for those who haven't yet entered a, the audio PIN number for their phone line. And that appears up under the phone call information. Um, I'll press a button to hopefully send you your, 
your PIN numbers. But if you type that in, press pound and your PIN, and then pound again, you should be able to then uh, come off of mute. But everyone else's line should be open. Um, so, uh, Laura, would you like to call on folks, or how would you like to do it? Yeah, let's um, <laughs> let's call on folks in the the order in which they're listed as attendees. Um, the very first person, we don't know who that is yet. That's uh, actually. I I think that's actually uh, Joe Mangum in Charlotte. Oh, hey Joe, are you able to tell us what's happening in Charlotte? Joe, oh, there you are. Okay. Um, yeah, we uh, we had our first partner team meeting um, this past month. We're um, we're planning our kickoff press conference uh, the 14th of July, and that'll coincide with the training. Um, we're pushing it forward this year, and the reason for that is that we have our annual traffic safety report, basically all of our crash data from the year 2015. And we saw an opportunity to give some good news with the, the bad news, <laughs> which is uh, our crashes have gone up 20% um, from 2014 to 2015. All crashes or ped bike crashes? These are these are total crashes. Ped bike stayed steady. Ped, yeah, ped bike were, were steady, but uh, we just, we just saw this as an opportunity to maybe, because um, because typically the media will pick up on the annual safety report and it won't be spent in a, in a positive light. I'll, I'll say that typically, um, but also uh, having it that day will give the opportunity for the media to hopefully turn from the formal press conference to filming some uh, demonstrations at a crosswalk nearby as officers are being trained. So we're still working that out with um, Officer Massengill, but that's, that's what we're hoping. So yep. looking forward to strengthening our, our partnerships that we developed last year and uh, having a, another successful campaign. Thank you. Um, Adrian Harrington, you guys are back, New Hanover County. Adrian, we can't hear you. I think you might be muted or the voice not activated? Well, Adrian, we may come back to you in a bit. Do we have folks from Asheville on the line? We're also not hearing from Asheville right now. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, um, I'm Christina Hollingsby, and I'm the Public Information Officer from the Asheville Police Department. And we really aren't going to change much of our communication strategy from last year. Um, we received really, really good media coverage. Um, we only had one small complaint within our media coverage. Um, the rest were actually very beneficial. We got a lot of um, information out about uh, crosswalks and correctly crossing and different problem areas that we have across Asheville. And we really, a lot of people weren't aware that um, for a 10-year period, Asheville was the highest pedestrian fatality um, city. So we were able to get that information out and really encourage people to abide by traffic laws. We did big pushes on social media. Um, we also created a few PSAs, one in particular in crosswalks, one of a more general. Um, and we used those throughout social media and different outlets. And then we also used community partners, um, a lot of the bike shops and different bike groups, to get information out to the biking community. Great. Thank you for that update. Um, Dale, can you tell us what's happening in Durham? 
Good morning. Um, a couple things. Uh, we are in the process of updating our uh, bicycle and pedestrian plans. So we've been uh, having a lot of uh, public outreach and public meetings and uh, over the last uh, month and a half or so, and that will continue uh, through uh, late fall. And so we've been trying to incorporate uh, Watch For Me uh, in, in that program as much as possible. Uh, we are continuing a lot of the stuff we've done in years past. Uh, we're, we're meeting with uh, the taxi um, driver training. We're doing that next week. Um, and Watch For Me is part of that uh, part of that program. Um, and I think you, you mentioned on one you mentioned one thing a, a couple moments ago about uh, uh, involving the um, universities in your area, and I and I think we we didn't have as much contact with uh, with Duke and North Carolina Central and and Durham Tech uh, last year, and, and want to try to reach reach out to them again and, and look at a more um, you know community wide um, uh, outreach and, and program. Uh, and one question or, or comment that I've gotten uh, from our Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission has to do with uh, enforcement of, um, of some of the bicycle laws and whether there are any strategies for doing that. Uh, I think they're particularly uh, talking about um, uh, providing adequate uh, width or you know, uh, space when 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 passing bicycles and and wondering if there's a way to uh, to do more enforcement along those lines. And uh, if you have a chance to comment on that or any thoughts on that, I'd appreciate it. Sure. So one of the challenges in North Carolina is that we have a two foot passing law uh, for bicyclists. So it's it's really not you know what we feel to be um, the best law for protecting cyclists to only require two-foot passing distance. Um, but that has been scrutinized as part of the last um, legislative committee they, they put together to examine the bike laws. And I think they were recommending a, to change the law to a four-foot um, passing distance. Um, but we don't really know where that's gone yet. Um, so right now, I think enforcement of that law is, is difficult. But there are other communities out there that are doing enforcement of bike laws, whether they have a three foot or four foot or six foot passing law. Um, Chattanooga is an example we've been learning from, as well as the city of Austin and some cities up in Pennsylvania. Um, what they've been doing is purchasing this device that fits on a bike, and it kind of has like a laser distance reader on it to where a, an officer can ride in a lane with this um, device and it also has a GoPro cam on it and can measure um, the distance of a of a bicyclist and it and it puts out an alert when the when the driver passes the bicyclist too closely um, and so there are those technologies that are out there there are examples I can um, share some of what we've been learning from that uh, offline if you want and we have been talking with Officer Massengill and others about. Um, you know, how do we do more enforcement of bike laws um, in the future? But I think that's a great question and something we're still um, learning about what the options are like for North Carolina. So I'll keep moving down the list. Um, Daniel in Greensboro, can you share with us what's, what you guys are planning now? Sure. Um, we've got a couple of um, we have a couple opportunities for different events in August that I've, I've learned about just recently. Um, besides the National Night Out, um, there's also going to be um, North Carolina DMV. Their safety or school bus and traffic safety section is doing a safety fair here at the uh, Greensboro DMV. Um, one of the DMVs on the Coliseum Boulevard. Um, that's on August 12th, and um, I was notified about that by our active roots of school coordinator, and, I, and that's obviously a great opportunity. There'll be police officers and, and fire department there uh, as well, um, and that's definitely a big opportunity. We've also been um, sort of invited to the city market, which is a downtown 
uh, sort of farmers market and entertainment um, events that they've been holding the last couple of years in downtown. And we, uh, in the first year, we we tried to tie our kickoff event with that. Um, the first year we were with Watch for ENC. Um, and we haven't done it in the last couple of years, but I think that is also a really good opportunity. They they're asking for um, they were asking for people from transportation to talk about um, projects that are coming up. And um, with this going on along with the theme of, of that specific market in August, that's on August 18th. Um, we have some bicycle facility projects that are coming up in the next few months that are going along with uh, some resurfacing that's going on. So we may be able to tie in something with that, with the, those facility projects being new. Um, maybe maybe tying some of the safety messaging in with uh, maybe a celebration bike ride or, or something along those lines uh, along those new facilities. Um, we've also got the the folk festivals here in Greensboro um, again this year and then for one more year. Uh, we didn't really tie in much with that last year, but I think that that's another big opportunity to uh, get some of the banners out. Um, maybe get a table up, um, and that's three days over uh, over a weekend in mid-September. Uh, and then we normally do, you know, a few walk, walk to school days. Um, I mentioned in the chat box at least two, and uh, but working, I'm going to be talking with our Active Roots of School coordinator next week on other programs and events to, to work on, to, to collaborate on um, over the fall. You guys have a lot going on. Thanks, Daniel. Um, Jeff, Officer Gilstrap in Morganton. You guys are a new community this year. Tell us what you have planned. Um, so far, I'm probably looking at doing a kickoff, starting everything around the end of July, first part of August. And that way, we'll be kind of getting close to the school's year. We can start partnering with them and getting everything set up with them to work with the elementary schools in the city and also in the county. Um, we've got a downtown concert series that will be winding up around then. We'll probably be doing some of the PR, just kind of getting a feel for it and seeing how it works, mapping it out and presenting it there. Because in September we have a huge festival where um, the whole downtown shut down, and we actually have a whole booth for the department for traffic safety and stuff. So we'll be adding it. Watch for me to that. Uh, we, I'll be contacting with the fire departments and getting them on board in the county, so we can work with them, and then also with other law enforcement agencies. So hopefully, that we'll get everything rolling by the end of this uh, first part of August maybe have a kickoff around when we have an official kickoff right around that big festival in September. And we look forward to seeing what you do this year. Uh, hey. uh, and Andrew in Raleigh, how are you today? Good, how are you? Uh, what we have planned um, for this month in July uh, Officer Keelan with our community services squad, she's got a couple bicycle rodeos planned. And just recently, um, I had my entire motorcycle unit trained with the Watch for Me NC program. So we are going to start doing some more pedestrian crosswalk operations in the downtown area and the NC State University area, probably, probably this week actually or next week when we get back from the holiday. Um, so that's going to be our focus. Um, and of course, we'll be participating in the National Night Out events, and hopefully we can distribute some of the materials that we've received um, in our training through those groups. Um, so we've got a lot going on. Excellent. And I see Susan is also on the line from Raleigh. Susan's the, um, relatively new to the Ped Bike Coordination um, position. Do you have anything to add from your side of things? 
Um, I really um, don't have much to add on top of what Officer Pugh said. Um, we are going to be um, bringing Watch For Me back before our BPAC um, just to, um, I guess, reintroduce them to the program. We do have some new members on our commission and um, get them on board um, with the program and especially with the community outreach committee that we've got. They're always looking for ways to um, better educate the public on pedestrian and bicycle issues, so this will definitely um, tie into that really well. And as Officer Pugh said, we um, we did the training earlier this week um, with Officer Massengill and um, I thought it was great. Um, I was excited for the turnout for um, in representation from uh, RPD on that. Yeah, we were really excited to see how many officers attended that. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are um, doing more training and getting back into the, the swing of enforcement. We've been, um, we've been hearing about the work you've been doing with, with Christy Jackson's group. So I'm glad it's going to keep going under the, the Watch For Me program. Yep. Thank you. Um, and going back to Stephanie. Can you hear me? Jacksonville, yes, I can hear you. So we're a little bit behind in Jacksonville. A lot of our officers have been tied up with other things, and we have a lot going on with um, the P4 process and point allocation. But besides that, we had a transportation open house this past Tuesday, um, and we it was a co combination of for our, the MPO with the points. We had Watch For Me there, and we had um, our signal guy there, and transit as well, and that turned out really well. Um, we're also planning on being at um, National Night Out, and um, then we'll get rolling again when the school year starts. We've had a lot of issues at a specific location in Jacksonville, which happens to be right across from Jacksonville High School. So I really want to push enforcement there, both car-wise and pedestrian-wise, because the students don't, there's a, there's a crosswalk there with an island, but the students don't necessarily always use that, and the drivers don't adhere to that. So I really want to push enforcement there so that everyone understand how to use that location. Um, but then hopefully we'll add some more events and I'm hoping to do some bike rodeos this summer as well. Thank you. And I think last but not least, the folks from Boone. Here, can, can you hear us? I can hear you now, yeah. thanks. Okay, good. Uh, we're, we're through the phone. Um, this is Eric Gustavus, and I've got Jane and uh, Jane Shook and Todd Moody with me, and uh, from Public Works and Planning. And we're, you know, I guess going into our third year on this, we've we've got a, a whole list of of activities that we're going to do again this year that we've done in the past. Uh, we we started back in March with uh, the BAMP Film Festival. We had a table there, and that's uh, an ASU film festival that attracts 2,000 people a night. So. Uh, we had a lot of people come by and see us there. Uh, we were involved in the walk bike to school day back in, in May, or was it May or April, uh, with Hardin Park. Uh, the police department was at kindergarten orientation, uh, and, and they were handing out uh, Watch For Me stuff there. Um, the Fourth of July parade is coming up on Monday, and we're going to feature a town float with Uncle Sam and, uh, and Watch For Me banners. Uh, and, and another thing the town is is uh, excited about right now is we just received the uh, bicycle friendly community designation, uh, bronze designation, uh, after the second uh, application uh, uh, that we've done for this. And so we'll feature uh, that designation as well on the float. Um, Cycle V is coming up in, in July, July 31st, and we're, we participate in that, um, as well as uh, the high school back to school day at the high school, uh, which will be the 1st of August. And then what we've done in the past for our official kickoff is a, uh, a bike rodeo at Hard Park School. That'll be August 27th. Uh, when ASU Appalachian State comes back in, uh, the, the end of August, 1st of September, there's a, uh, a safety fest, and we've, we'll, we'll have a table 
there along with the police department and fire department and and um, uh, we let's see uh, the big thing one of the big things we did last year which we're planning on the, again this year is uh, we close off Main Street for uh, downtown Boo at, at Halloween and we hand out uh, bags uh, reflective bags with the Watch for Me uh, logo on it and I think we had about what 500 bags last year that went out. Um, so those are some of the things uh, that that we've got coming up. Uh, some of the some of the stuff we've looked at today that we've learned. I, I like what Greenville's doing with those signs at crosswalks, um, and the utility billing is something that we're, we we think we can get the message out through our utility billing as, as well, and that's that's a good idea. Um, and what else, Jen? We'll just have more opportunities with our new partners. Yeah, it seems like we're going to, we're planning another partner meeting coming up here, uh, hopefully in July, and and uh, and one one partner that uh, it's University Recreation that that we feel like will will be a good partner this year, uh, as well as all the partners we've had in the past. Um, but that's that's pretty much it from from Boone. Thank you, Eric. You guys are always doing really exciting things, and I'm going to start hounding you to get pictures because I know that some of these. Are <laughs> great. Oh, well, I think we've yeah. got. I think we've got pictures around. I, I, we'll just have to get them compiled and, and get them to you. But yeah, uh, we've got a good. number. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. And anybody else who's already doing events or you have them coming right around, um, be sure to keep your your phones and your cameras there and, and send us. Um, and it's what you have because we love to put those into the reports for DOT and also just share them with the other communities um, to keep the excitement going. So I think that's it unless there's anybody I missed. Um, I know a couple people had to jump off early. Um, is there anybody else on the phone line that didn't get a chance to give an update? Well, um, if you do have any follow-up questions or thoughts, the, the listserv is always there. And uh, right now we're trying to figure out the best schedule um, for the next meeting. I know a lot of you have things um, happening in August. August and September tend to be pretty um, busy times for everybody. If you have a strong preference um, for when the next meeting is held or if you have dates for when you really do not want it to be held, um, feel free to email me that, put it in the chat box, just let us know, and we'll be putting out um, kind of the announcements for the next chair meeting and what that topic will be. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your time today. I, I really enjoy hearing what's happening and um, am excited to, to see what's going to take place for Watch For Me in the next couple months.